Welcome to a Healing Peace Podcast. We partner with JNTEL, a nonprofit organization that provides educational programs to promote emotional and mental health while building our identity in Christ. In this podcast series, you will learn about me, Kimir Baker, the CEO and founder of JNTEL, and other life changers. We inspire, equip, and support you along your journeys. By the renewal of our minds, we overcome life challenges. We renew and rise up. Welcome back to a Healing Peace podcast. I'm so excited to have you home. Last week, we began our conversation about going into circles and being on that repeated path that eventually leads to darkness. Well, you know how I do when we have a new segment. I always have great guests on the show to share their insights so we can glean and learn from their experiences. And this week, I'm not going to disappoint you. We have Jose on the show today, and we're going to delve into having a renewed mind amidst darkness, especially unwanted darkness. Jose, welcome to the show. Please let us know who you are. Provide a little bit of background information so our audience can get to know you a little bit better. Thank you very much, Kemir, for having me. Thank you very much to the audience that's hearing this. It's an honor to be in this program. My name is Jose Pereira. I'm Venezuelan-born, but, but I'm dual Venezuelan-American. I have maybe 15 years living here in the U.S. that I came here. And I am a former oil and gas executive. I worked 35 years, long career in the oil and gas. And my career finished in 2017. I, in that moment, was in basically in the pinnacle of my career and ready to get retired after 35 years. And I was the CEO of a multinational oil and gas in that moment. And we received a last-minute call. That was November 2017. And that last-minute call was to go to a trip to Caracas, Venezuela. And it was a business, a normal business meeting that I was used to go normal way. So I went to the meeting. It was a very large meeting, around 1,000 people in the meeting room because it was a big international budget meeting. And when I finished my presentation, I was ready to come back to here to, to the U.S., to Houston, where I live. And the situation resulted that it was a settlement because maybe people, people are not aware, but that year in 2017, there was having a lot of issues with Venezuela and the uh, administration that was here in the U.S., uh, the Trump administration, because they declared that that administration in Venezuela was illegitimate. And then we're impo imposing a lot of sanctions to that country, like, like you have seen they did with Russia, with the Ukrainian war, similar sanctions, you know, sanctions to people, to the country, and then oil embargo, and the thing where we're really going bad. And we were caught in the middle of that situation because they, they took us as hostages. So I became an international hostage. And that situation, back and forward between the two governments, uh, Trump administration was gone, came the Biden administration, and I came back here after five years through a prisoner swap. I came back in October 1st last year. I had one year that I came back through a prisoner swap, having been five years as a hostage. So th this is my story, uh, and I will continue talking about what I'm doing today. Thank you. I know that when I first met you, I was blown away by your story because you don't present yourself as someone who went through an emotional traumatic event. You are very well spoken. You have a lot of passion. And when you shared your story with me, I was so floored because, again, you didn't look like someone who just went through something so traumatic. And so I'm wondering, during that period, especially since it was so unexpected, how did you manage your emotions and, and just walking through or dealing with being in the unknown? So how did you manage yourself for five years in that dark place? Well, this is a very great question because uh, this is something that I can tell is it, 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 it went like in phases. It was a kind of an evolution. 
I present myself like a survivor. Uh, you're true. And it's because when we were there at the beginning, and let me tell you to the audience, today I'm a, I'm a adversity coach, okay? And because I learned a lot uh, about my process. So when you're having any adversity, like my case, that was a very traumatic uh, adversity, the first thing that this is something that it comes suddenly. Adversity never announced, never announced. And by the way, you are not prepared to adversity. Even if you have the proper mindset, Nobody's prepared, totally prepared. So that was my case. My first reaction when this happened to me was, this is a mistake. This, there is something wrong. This is not happening to me. So you don't accept it. I, I was denying. I didn't accept it. So uh, uh, after a few days that we were going through that process, because we were put in a military basement, in, uh, we were caught with, by a counterintelligence police, something really dark that, that, that country has. That is like a copy paste of what the Iranian and the Russians and the Cuban do. Well, and realize that really this is really happening to you. So you begin to accept it. You begin to accept this. And at some point, when you accept it, you say, okay, this is my reality. And then comes decision point. You decide if you really want to deal with it or you really want to go down. And that is where the people really broke sometimes. People broke and... People can commit suicide. I, I, I saw a lot of things on that. I'm not saying that it was easy for me at the beginning because we, we as, as I said, was like a faces. So at the beginning, we, we were totally lost. We didn't know what was going on. And by the way, I stayed like 10 months totally incommunicated. So I, even I didn't know what was going on in the, in the external world. I lost every contact with the external world and lost contact with my family. I lost that sense of time because we had the, the light all the day turned on and we, we didn't have, at some point you are totally lost. When after 10 months, uh, we learned one day because we had a phone call and we learned that our family was really fighting hard in our case. Uh, today I'm, I'm, I'm totally aware of what was the situation. The first, since day one, they contacted the U.S. government because we were six guys. Okay. so. Uh, because we were six, and at some point the press put us a name. They call us the Citgo Six, because Citgo was the company. Citgo Petroleum was the company I was working, and they named us Citgo Six. So we were six guys. So we were six family, and the U.S. government was really working hard to bring us back. But the negotiation began to fail, and then the press pressure begin to be really bad. Uh, you know, the Trump administration was really imposing a lot of sanctions to that country. And, 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 and our situation put the things even worse. So at some point, uh, the U.S. ambassador of Venezuela was, uh, in Venezuela was expelled. So when we learned that the U.S. ambassador wa was expelled, by the way, he tried to visit us like 11 times. He never could talk with us. So the situation went really, really from bad to worse. And that moment we begin to receive a visit uh, of the UN. The people of the UN was contacted and they flew to Venezuela to see us. And, and, and that was when we could have a little relief because this guy began to talk to the government and say, hey, these guys are going to die. They're starving to death. They're, they're sick. These guys are going to die. So, so they begin to relax a little bit, the, the pressure that, that was putting, uh, and we can have some kind of communication with my family. And I begin to smuggle letters in the food that we, we begin to receive. So that made me that I could contact my family and begin to know what was going on. So there, it was like a second phase of, of our situation. It began to evolve because now we were more aware all the initiative our family was doing, all the things that was going on. And, and every time I get more and more communicated, that that begin to give me a, a lot of hope. So so uh, that make more change. I can give you. You can talk, but I will continue talking about the, how the situation continue evolving. Did you know that a Healing Peace podcast has a website? You will find resources along with our very own tools and tips on our website. Our tools and tips provide tangible principles to keep you on your emotional healing and wellness journeys. While you are on our website, sign up for our newsletter. You will receive a free emotional wellness assessment just for signing up. Also, 
you will stay informed about podcast episodes, courses, and workshops. You will receive all this great information just for signing up for our newsletter. Go to ahealingpeace.com today. Yeah, because I'm curious. I, I want to take a step back when you were talking about at a certain point, you just have to accept your circumstance. And when you got to that place, did you also try to bring along the other five people who were there to get them to a place of acceptance so that there was an, a, a level of commonality or community being built at the same time? Well, at the beginning, the answer is no, because we were separate. The first year, we were totally separate. I learned where all my, my colleagues were uh, located one year after. So I didn't know where we were. We were totally uh, separated. So, so it was crazy because we didn't know what was going on. So after one year, is that uh, because all this pressure that was going on, they decided to put us together. So one year after is that we met. And when we met one year after, I remember that we, we had, it was kind of funny because we were in the room, the six of us, like deliberating what we were going to do. And I, I, I had a, like a deja vu. Like it was, we were in the, in the old days, in, back in the old days in, the, in a board meeting. I felt like we weren't discussing in a board meeting about some management topics. So we were talking about how to begin to handle this situation. And in that moment is that we really went to what I call the survival mode. Because really, we created a plan. We decided, we write it down, a plan, how to manage our survival mode and, 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 and created a daily routine. And, and one of the guys, he became the plan keeper. No, he was keeping that we, we, we were stick to the plan in a daily basis. When I'm talking about a daily plan, I'm talking about a daily plan to, to eat, a daily plan to clean, a daily plan to exercise, a daily plan to, to read, a daily, because by that moment we were having books, uh, the, the daily plan to, to write, because I was a smuggling letters, daily plan to have fun. We, we created some kind of a domino with papers and we were playing domino. And a daily plan to pray and read the Bible at the end. So all, all that daily program, we did it in a way that respecting the, the space of the other, respecting the silence, and, and really we begin to coach. Our, or if somebody for some reason was someday down, boom, the others jumped in and, and boosted uh, you know, the, the hope, the resilience. So this, this really, we, the way we did it today, today they have been studying about adversity and res resilience and, and, and trauma and all this stuff. And, I, and by the way, I went to a national trauma center here when, when I came back and I had been in therapy, et cetera. So when I begin to go deep diving in this situation, I learned that the way we did it, and we did it without no expertise. We did it basically based on common sense. We were guys that come in from the oil and gas. You have like a strategic way of thinking. And in and, and, and some way, and of course, with, a, with the help of God, because at the end, this is something that was guided by God, we began to create this plan. And today, really, really, we did like a step-by-step -step thing that the, 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 the expert always tell how you have to handle any adversity. So we really begin to handle it. So, so the, the, the long uh, answer uh, is that was a process. It was a process, and we learned uh, during, during the time that, that uh, when the time began to pass, we begin to have more hope. We begin to have more faith. We become more resilient. We begin to help uh, each other. Uh, so it was like an evolving situation. That unfortunately, it was for, for better for us. Right. And actually, I'm going to take a step back because for some odd reason, I thought that that first year, you guys were always together. And so to hear that you were not, my mind was, oh my goodness, I can't believe you endured a year of solitude and didn't lose your mind or commit suicide. I can tell you, I saw other guys committing suicide. I saw guys hanging themselves. I, I, I saw a lot of things there, people that, I, because we were in a military installation. We were with Venezuelan political 
military prisoners, guys with ranks of generals, colonels, lieutenants, um, captains, a, a lot of people uh, of, the, of the military. And so, some of these guys didn't make it. They, they, their mind was not prepared. Even they had the training, they were not prepared. And some way, I, I can tell you, I, today I say that it was the hand of God. Because I don't know how we, if you tell me today, I still am wondering how we really made it because we were in really extreme situation. Let me tell you, we, we, in, in that first year, I was in, a, a, in a, like a third uh, floor basement. Uh, it was called a submarine because it was like a vessel. Didn't have windows. We didn't have running water. We didn't have fresh air. The light all the day turned on. So literally, you, you really, really can go mad. Really, really. I saw get people there going mad. But for some reason, I don't know, it was the hand of God, but we were like more prepared and, and, and we went through it. Wow. We went through it. That's so amazing. And so it's kind of interesting, even hearing that you're acknowledging God, there's a piece of me, the, the whole human side of me that thinks, well, maybe it was something in your past that you endured that prepared you for this moment. Did you ever feel like that at all at some point? <laughs> Come here, I can tell you. I, I could uh, still be here talking hours about this. Let me tell you, I learned, I learned, I really learned. And, 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 and this is something I learned after I came back because, as I said, I have been with a therapist, a wonderful therapist. And she has been me, me, making regression with me and uh, 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 scarving in my past. And I have a lot of situations in my past that prepared me for this. And I was not aware of that. I lost my dad when I was 14. Then I lost my mother uh, some years after. And, and I went through a lot of adversities in my life that, that in some point your mind forgets that. It, I, I was not really thinking in all that situation I went in my past. But I truly, truly believe today that that was God preparing me for this event. I had a lot of events in my past that prepared me for this. By the way, all these things we're talking here are things that are going to be talking in my book because I went through that process. I, I had to go back to that process and, and, and learn that my life in God was preparing me for that event. Yeah. And I think what is so profound by you acknowledging that is that when we go through difficult times, we're so quick to want to get out of it. And when we do get out of it, sometimes we don't reflect on what it developed into us in terms of our character, our strength, and how it helped us to be more resilient, how it can overflow into other areas of our lives. So many times we're so clueless to that. And so to hear you share that part about your story, I actually got really excited because you, you bring to attention that there's there's always good in the midst of darkness or trouble. That if we're willing to go through that journey, there's so much that we can gain from it. Well, this is to totally true. Wow, you, you're giving a lot of gems here. <laughs> I'm really surprised. Let me tell you, yes, yes, the answer is definitely is yes. Something that today I'm very aware is that when you decide to go, and this is something by choice, when you, you, when, when you have that adversity, and you can name any adversity. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be general here because I went through a situation, but this can be used to anybody in their life. You're going through an adversity, and, and you, at the end, you accept it because it's, that is your situation. So you can have two choices. You can uh, go to the, like, the wrong choice, and then you will get depressed with anxiety and the, the little people commit suicide by the way or you decided to 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 overcome it to face it and and this has to do with having a positive mindset and for some reason i have been a guy always really positive all my life that that is part of my dna you can train it i learned that that the people can train it so even you can have that in, in a, like something natural, but people really can get trained to, to go to this path. So that, that is the good news. Yeah. 
And with you sharing that, you definitely echoed a lot of things that we've spoken about on our podcast throughout the year, especially since we're dealing with a, a renewed mindset. And 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 hearing you talk about positivity and and now not only hearing you talk about it, but you are a testament to it actually works. Yeah, definitely. I always say something to the people. If I can do it, you can do it. Because because I, I I'm a proof of life that it can be done. So so it's not that I, I'm a philosopher. It's not that I'm a, I'm a catedratic. It's something that happened to me, and in, in, in a natural way we handle it. And I'm here. I, I'm not saying that it's perfect. I, I, as I said, when I came back, I, I went through a lot of trauma, specialists and therapies. But I I have the mindset to overcome it. It is it, having the mindset, having. Having the decision that no matter what you're going through, you you really can overcome it. And today I said nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible, but you need to have the proper mindset. And so when you were seeing things going on around you that was unnerving, especially when you were talking about those who didn't make it, what did you do to pull yourself back into having that positive mindset since you just visibly saw something, I saw tortures. So I, I, I not only saw so people, be, because remember, we're talking about a regime, a, a communist regime, applying things that they have learned from from other communist countries. They, 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 these guys are are a good a good uh, students. You know, have have good uh, teachers, but the, the students are better than the teachers. So. So this guy learned very fast how to be evil. So I saw a lot of evil. I saw a lot of evil there. Yeah. And so was there specific techniques that you did to pull yourself back into the positivity versus what you were seeing? Yes. Let me tell you something. One, one of the things that I, I, I learned, we applied it, is that everything I'm going to say today are things that we learned in a in a based on common sense, and I have been refining after I came back because I have been studying this. One of the first things we did, decided to do is when you accept it, you, you dis- we decided to be calm and focused. Be focused in the situation and try to stay calm. You know, we, we begin to meditate. One of our, our, uh, the guys that was with me, he was a Buddhism guy, so he began to teach us to meditate. I was there was a guy that he 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 was like a yoga specialist. He be, we begin to do yoga. So we in that tiny place begin to do things to to try to maintain our, our, our sanity. And the other thing, after when when I begin to receive books, because I said at some point they relax a little bit and begin to allow us to have books. There is a book that came to me. That today I, I talk extensively about that book because I encourage the people to read it. He's a survivor in the World War II in one of the concentration camps for, of the Jews in Auschwitz. Uh, his name is Viktor Frankl, and the, and the book is A Man in the Search of a Meaning. So when I read that book, wow, that guy was really talking to me. He was talking about the, uh, the people that survived this type of ordeal is because they find a meaning in their life, a purpose. And, and of course, that, that my, for me, the purpose was coming back to my family, and, and, but in a, in a peace. I, I didn't want to come back broken. So I was telling my wife the, two days ago, the, the, see, see the reflection, because one of the military guys that were with me, they were released like two weeks ago. I had opportunity to talk two weeks ago with a guy who was with me like five years there. They were released one year after I came. So two weeks ago, they were released. So when I was talking with this guy, I was telling my wife, hey, these guys are going to have problems in their life, in, in their families, because those guys didn't sleep. They were, they were awakening all the night. And let me tell you, for me, was sacred at 10, a. 10 p.m., I was in bed. I was in bed going to sleep. After I, I, I finished uh, reading the Bible and praying, I went like a baby to bed until the morning. So I tried to maintain that, that discipline, having my, my night to, to rest and, and sleep 
and that they some people don't do that and 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 they're going to come back really broken for their family. They're going to be like uh, zombies in, in, in the night in their, in their houses. That's not my case. I, w- I always had that discipline. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you talked about that as well. That's something we talked about, too, on the podcast about rest and the value of it. And I, I will admit, I'm still working on it for myself because I get so entangled with life and my to-do list that I make it more challenging to just rest. But I think hearing you have reinforced the value of it, uh, not only for your body to recover, but it was very instrumental in helping you to remain sane in the midst of everything that you were going through. Having a routine. Another thing we applied was, as I said, we prepared a, a daily plan. Let me tell you, the daily plan... For us, was keeping all, all the day busy doing things, and, and you didn't have time to think about nothing. You were doing, doing, doing. You were like a hamster doing things in in your in your cage. So literally, we begin at uh, six a.m. in the morning when when the breakfast was taken. Everybody was in their bed, and the, and we had like a schedule to, for for take uh, the the breakfast and the lunch and the dinner. So everybody, we had a tiny table with a tiny chair. So we did it one by one in silence. We're respecting that, that the space of, of the other in the solace. So you were literally in peace taking your, your, your food. And then when, when everybody was cleaning, we had a schedule for cleaning. We, we weren't during the pandemic, remember 2020, the pandemic was hitting hard there. And we, we began to do a very strong sanitation, a daily sanitation in the room. It was a tiny room, by the way. We were living like in a closet, but, but, but we had that very clean. We were uh, cleaning all the day. Every day we had a schedule to clean. We had a daily schedule to read. We had a daily schedule to write. We had a daily schedule to have some play. We had a daily schedule to, to, to read the Bible, to pray, and to sleep. So we created a daily routine. And that was a one day. It began to one week. It began to one month. And at the end, we came back. And that's so inspiring. And I'm actually looking at the time. and I'm like, oh, my goodness, we run out of time. But before we close, I'm wondering if there is something that you can leave as a little nugget. Because, A, I want you to come back because I have so many more questions. But something that you can leave as a nugget for encouraging someone else to get through their difficult situations. You gave us so much insight, but if you can sum up in one or two words, like, hey, I know you might be having a tough week this week and things may seem emotionally dark. Here is something that can guide you through the rest of the week. I would love to hear you share something about that. The first thing I, I want to say is that any adversity in life, you can overcome it. That's the, the first statement. Second, you need to be first, as I said, Face it, be calm, be f- focused, but face it. Accept that you're going through that. Have the positive mindset to, po- to, to, to face it. Look the support of, of the people that love you. Look, look for help. Don't, don't face this alone. Have support. Try to maintain your sanity. Do exercise, do yoga, do meditation, do whatever you want to do. Do things that maintain you physically and your mental health. And finally, Look to your spirituality. Go back to your inner uh, uh, space and look to your spirituality in whatever you believe in the universe, in God, in the in the higher power, how, whatever you name it, in Buddha, in Allah, whatever you think. But look to that. If you do all these techniques and, and really look to the purpose, what you really want to do after this, my friend, you're, you're going to uh, overcome it. And this is something that today, as I said, I, I'm in the campaign promoting my book because my book is not only based on my story, it's based on these things that I'm talking today that I, I call the legacy. That, that it's not only the, the drama of what we went through because we went through a drama, but, but, but for me is that the people when read the book had the sense that, oh, this guy could make it. If he couldn't do it, I really can make it. That, that's my legacy. I'm going to give you the, the links that you can put it there when the, you, you are this program, because I really, really want that people um, 
you know, go go and, and to, to the my link and see my book because this is the everything we're talking here. I'm gonna talk there in my book, but of course, more profounding, trying to give more insights that the people really can think about that. And this is part of the thing that today I'm talking and I'm I'm teaching about. Well, I thank you for sharing. You summed up our first part of the interview so well. I couldn't have done a better job. You hit all the points. Those were the points I had listed. So as you were speaking, I was checking them off. I was like, okay, he got it, he got it. But what I would like to do is have you back to just to put, pick your brain a little bit more in terms of your journey of healing, going to a therapist, all that good stuff. And of course, listening more to how you're empowering more people through your coaching and through your book. So I want you to come back. I'm not going to even ask you. I'm just going to say you're coming back so that people can continue to be inspired by who you are. So in the interim, we'll put up his details as he's listed. You can go check him out even more, but come back and we're going to continue this conversation. Thank you very much for having me.